we're going to try our, uh, our luck at round two of the expanded Saunders E6 online tour. I'm um, playing at the Prairie Dunes Country Club. Uh, there are a few software glitches on E6 Connect um, just during the gameplay here, so it's a bit of a challenging round, specifically hole 12. Um, also, you've noticed that I've added an extra screen and a camera screen capture. And I'm currently capturing the Foresight Sports Performance Video app. Um, this is a free app. You do have to have a license with FSX 2020 or 2018, um, even prior to if you have uh, something uh, a little earlier. Um, this can be used on the quad, um, GC2, etc. Uh, I would imagine it would work on the, on the Hawk if you're using it indoors as I am right now. I'm displaying the performance fitting app on an iPad, uh, iPad Pro 11 Gen 2, this year's model. And um, I've got it up here so that we can have a look at uh, the comparison of GC quad carry numbers and just some of the other ball data compared to um, E6 Connect. And you'll see with the driver specifically and working our way down some of the longer clubs, longer irons, there's quite a discrepancy between um, the carry distances between E6 and um, the quad uh, data so you'll see it on the screen here and I might switch back and forth and give you a little bit of the the club uh, club data as well impact position etc I do have fiducials on most of my clubs so we'll be able to have a look at that and show you a little bit about the app itself um, currently what I use the performance fitting app for again the app is free on um, the Apple Store and it is an Android app as well um, free and again you have to have the license but most of the time if I use the quad outdoors which isn't a lot these days just when you have a, a sim bay uh, you don't make it out to the driving range that often I don't anyway um, but if I do go out and I take my quad to the driving range I will use this performance fitting app it gives you great data it gives you all the club head data and it gives you all the the ball data that you need um, there is the FSX app as well um, that one works really well. It's got a kind of a neat driving range. I prefer the performance fitting app just for more analytics and uh, more analysis of ball and club. So, so that's it in a nutshell. And we'll walk our way through the app a little bit as we uh, play here and get through this round a little bit. That's not a great start. So you can see on the app, uh, pure pull hook, carry distance on uh, E6 Connect uh, 258, on the quad 271, and uh, I believe that was 271 uh, duck hook is what I call it. And you can see uh, my path was slightly into out, almost one degree, but face was closed two and a half degrees, and a high strike on the club face, so um, duck hook. And uh, inside the app itself, if uh, you want to see the actual face of the club on the club analysis, you do have to change from driver to iron or, or putter, etc., and hit accept. And what I'm talking about is the next time I hit a shot that's not a driver and it's an iron, it'll show me an iron club face here on the screen. So, so uh, you don't have to change it doesn't affect the, the data or the shot, it's just the look and the impact location on the club and driver versus an iron is quite significant. So um, if it's uh, something that you want to do, feel free. Um, I'll do it on some of the shots just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like and um, some of the shots I just want. So complete preference. Well, I'm not sure we're going to get it all the way there with a little bit of grass tag there. We did hit that tall grass. Um, the distance for that shot was 140. That's kind of getting to be the max of my pitching wedge, 135, 140. And it came up a little short tag in that grass. Otherwise, I think uh, we might have had a, a pretty decent shot right at the flag there. Left us a little 29 footer choose to use my lob wedge but I'll just go back to that screen here for the club head analysis you can see it was a little towards the heel a little low um, pitching wedge 8300 backspin not bad uh, face was 
and that face was slightly closed, so we hung on to that one quite well. But that gives you an idea what the club head data looks like with a touch of draw in it. <coughs> and we'll see if we can pitch this little 29 footer, get it inside 10 feet here. Well, we barely snuck that one in there. It's kind of scrappy, a uh, little par. Tough all the way down on this hole. So we had one four one. Again, that's a good pitching wedge for me, a full pitching wedge. The challenge for me is when I swing 100% with my irons, I start getting really um, quick in my hands and start doing a little bit of a pull hook so I always got to be mindful of that when I'm trying to hit uh, this type of a shot here and when I think about it too much I'll do exactly that and I'll push it out to the right we might catch the green come on roll on there it almost turned out pretty good with a little bit of bounce and spin there A slippery four inch downhill. Oh, we got it to fall. Good turn up. So two ninety three to the pin. Started out with a pretty poor drive. Kind of that duck hook that we were talking about. I'm going to go back and see if I can get a get a drive on line here some way, somehow. See if we can hit this screen. <clears throat> well, that one was solid. Stop. Stop. So well, that one might be a decent, um, decent uh, shot to look at. So we had carry on E6 Connect of 291 on quad 295. So I'm pretty close. You can see why that shot sounded good for me indoors here. The sound of it, you can tell it was a perfect shot. Backspin ideal, launch in that 14 window, like it, dead center, club face, all in all, that was uh, a nice drive, like that one. Obviously, uh, we would have preferred if it would have stayed on the green. So we got a 67 foot shot left, kind of um, a gap wedge choice of weapons here. Oh, geez, that looked really good the whole time. I thought that was going to drop. Good hole, though. Would have really liked to see an eagle there. That would have been brilliant. All right. 159. So you can see I keep coming into the performance app and changing from iron to driver. Just so when we look at the screen, my last shot was obviously driver so that the club, uh, club head data shows up. I'm going to show me a picture of a club head, uh, of an iron head instead of a driver head when I'm teeing off here. Um, you don't need to again, you don't need to do that. Um, that's just a, a preference if you want to. It doesn't affect the shot, just affects the look and the impact position on the, on the club. So I'm looking at an 8 iron here, yeah, and I left that one way to the right, missed the green even. <clears throat> so I wouldn't call that a slicey one, that was just a pure push and you can see the path into out great with the club face is open almost 3 degrees. Yep, that was just 
a well-deserved one. <coughs> Pretty decent chip though. Just ends up being a, a par round doing that, missing greens, missing fairways. And the confidence in my fade right now with the driver, not very strong, so kind of aiming for the middle of the fairway now and we're going to find out if we can get that face under control here a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, wait until you see the club dad on that one. She's a sky, <clears throat> sky ball. Uh, you can see it on the screen so on the performance app, that blue tracer, if you haven't already figured it out, that's the most recent shot or the last shot. And then you can see the red dot on the club face in the bottom right hand corner of the performance app. The red dot's the last shot and it's exactly there. I can even see a, not a scuff, but I can see a bald dust print on the paint of my driver face there. So and we would call that ugly. leaving us with uh, 162. Maybe a little bit in between clubs here. Only because of the 18 feet, I think so. Smooth, smoothest seven iron. Might be too much. Uh, not if you hit it fat. Part of the challenge golfing while you're doing a video like this is uh, you spend more time flapping your lips, talking, and less time thinking about golf. <clears throat> Just about snuck one in there. <clears throat> So if we find that our performance app, call it the range that we're on right now, is getting a little bit busy, we can come in here and edit our session and just hit delete and it'll delete all our shots and just go back to done. Inside the edit, we can edit session one and we can call session one uh, whatever we want, add some notes. By default, it does come up as session one and your next time around, if we don't delete everything, um, by default, session two will be the next uh, time we use the app. And keep in mind that all the data that's coming off the performance um, fitting app here that we're using from Foresight Sports is going to log. Um, in my case, I'm hooked up to an internet connection right now, so it's currently logging on the FSX Live web portal. So all your data is being captured there for long time use which is a, a great feature. Love that about uh, Foresight. Their software is uh, really top notch in that, in that space. <coughs> well, we finally hit a fairway. That's a great start. So what did we have? 284 carry on E6 Connect. 283 carry on quad, so similar, similar. You see, I never changed it to a driver. Um, it's still showing me the impact location on the iron face, but um, gives you an idea. All the analytics are still the same the in to out, the club face closed, all that stuff is still accurate. Just when you start looking at the impact position on the club face, obviously, an iron versus a driver, you've got to start using your imagination there a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, 
such a hard shot in a simulator to hit those half shots with the wedge. See, quad had me, I needed 60, I think it was 67 yards. I didn't catch to see what um, E6 had us at there, but quad had us at 65, 64 and a half yards. So I'm feeling pretty confident that uh, that strike was there. Um, I spend a lot of time on uh, FSX 2020 using um, just the, the generic uh, Foresight range and capturing that waist high shot, the three quarter shoulder high shot, and about a knee high shot, just grabbing the, the distance for all my different wedges. I feel like I got them down pretty good, but golf is golf and they're not perfect. And as good as that one was, well, the quad said we carried it all the way there anyway, so. Anyway, might have been a discrepancy, could have been just a crappy shot and I should accept it. <clears throat> kind of carried that one right over the break. I was scared to putt that one even though it was giving me the, the putting tracer. Every now and then you'll hear if you're on forums or if you're on Discord or anything uh, in, in the environment around E6, you'll hear about the Velcro putt. I've had quite a few of those recently and I wasn't interested in having one there. So just because we were just kind of close to the edge of the fringe, to me it looked like we were on the fringe but uh, it was close enough that it was giving us the putting tracer, but in my opinion, it wasn't worth, uh, wasn't worth finding out the hard way. It's a high strike on the club face there. <clears throat> so quad had us at 274, this one's got us at 258, so Pretty big difference there. Back's been 2100, so not really sure what goes on when those types of shots happen. But um, there is a bit of an algorithm challenge there. straight and just kind of got late, a little late on the release. What is this? This is a par 5. Let's get a 50 foot little chip. It's going a little right to left. Oh, I didn't hit it. Go ball. Jeez, that was an easy... Um, give me birdie and I just didn't hit it. Kind of hit it high on the toe with my lob wedge. Uh, 12 foot punt here. Any harder than that one would have uh, lipped out so it's a perfect weight for slightly left left edge putt. <sighs> Got a rainy night today, my current location. Last few days have been in the low 40 degrees Celsius, so it's been hot playing in the simulator bay here last few days, especially during the day. Tonight's not a bad night for being out here. There's a big hill there. It takes a lot to carry that hill, actually. <clears throat> 138. What hole is this? Hole 8. So I'm trying to keep an eye on uh, hole 12, because hole 12 has got some major glitches on it. And I don't know how I'm going to play around that glitch or get 
get to it, so I'm trying to find out. But it's not just me. I see uh, how I found out about it. There's a lot of people online talking about it. So I went and had a look and went and played hole 12 in a practice round. And yeah, it's got issues. I shot a 12 on uh, hole 12. So I'm trying to avoid that in this um, competition round here. Darn it. So we'll have a look at that one because that was a, a low bladed slice there with my pitching wedge. <clears throat> and you can, you can actually look at the data on that one on the club head data and it, it didn't even capture it. It was just kind of an ugly shot all the way around. Low blady ugly one. <clears throat> stop dead. <laughs> no release on that at all. That was that gap wedge bump and run that just stopped dead. You know, it slightly got an upslope there, but not that much to stop it dead like that. Par save with a good putt. I would have thought that went farther. Didn't hit it great, but it was better than that. Would have hit 265 carry on E6 Connect, 273 on Quad. Uh, either way, it wasn't a great shot. That one's inside the gimme range, yep. six iron just to take a little bit of distance off of it here. <clears throat> well, I hit a baby fade and it went a lot further than I wanted it to. But we're on the green. Shouldn't complain, but a 51 foot putt is not that easy. Oh, stop, stop. spraying a few of my clubs and my driver left, right, all over the map here. Oh. 
I couldn't decide if I wanted it in the bunker or in the grass, to be honest. Just a just a pull. That's the that's the miss. That's the miss today anyway. That was close. That was close. I did. I got a, a mark on my turf out in the front here that I pre lined up on the straight flat putting green of E6 Connect. I go to the 20 foot putting green and it's flat straight, obviously. And I'll go and I'll put a piece of blue masking tape in my case down. And then I know where I want to putt to on a regular. And I saw that one on that particular putt. I did um, pull it just a little bit to the left side of that tape, maybe left edge of the tape, so kind of expected that miss, but every now and then. Quad was 296, 285 on E6 Connect, so decent discrepancy there. That one was hit dead center, so a very nice solid strike. Club head 112, smash factor 146, so pretty efficient strike that one. Uh, very center, I don't think I had the driver club face turned on on the next screen here, but you can see even with the iron picture up, dead center. A pretty decent spin. Launch angle, touch low for what I would want, but uh, still pretty efficient. A 100 yard shot left. It's an awkward distance for me, 100 yards. Oh, this must be hole number 12. So inside five feet. I actually don't know how it is number 12. Uh, this should be interesting. So we stuck that one inside five feet. Obviously, it's on video, we saw it. I don't know what we're going to end up with, but it could be really, really ugly here. You can see it's not even giving me a, a putting line, which is weird. I don't know why. I don't even know how to play this hole. I've learnt my lesson on it already, so I kind of know what to expect. calculating here because I want to try to put this one I try on every hole to put them in the hole but uh, in reality I need to make this I need to make this putt because it's going to roll right back towards where I'm at could be even worse than where I'm at and I might get an out of bounds so this is going to be ugly This 
so I think just having a look on Discord uh, earlier today, um, people that have had this problem on hole number 12, I think the, the guys, um, the admin guys, are going to probably give everybody that's got those high ridiculous scores with this problem that you're seeing on camera here. I think they're just going to give everybody a, uh, a 5. I don't even know if this is a par 5 or a par 4, but um, anyway, I think that's the plan. See, there's an out of bounds. It's 12 feet from the pin in the middle of the green, and we got an out of bounds. Unfortunate. I'm just going to pick up because I'm not going to go through the battle of doing this. I've been here. I shot a 12. I've hit putts. I hit chips. I hit at the hole, lipped off the hole. You've seen that iron shot that I hit stuck within five feet on the first shot, which would have been a birdie. And um, we're going to end up with a god awful number. We were minus four, now we're plus four. <clears throat> and for these, these are the sorts of things on E6 that I'm just not a fan of. There's so many errors, and I know there's a lot of people, and some of you guys might comment, they're trying hard, it's a small company, they're doing their best. And I truly believe that. They are doing their best, and they are trying hard. Um, but it's still frustrating. I don't care who you are. If you're, if you're just playing with for fun, playing with the boys in the shed here, hitting some golf balls, drinking a beer, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. But um, a, a bit of an online comp, of course, everybody's trying, you're trying your hardest, you're doing your best to put, post some low scores, and that sort of thing starts happening. And it's not like it's new. This has been going on, these types of flaws or glitches have been going on for a long time. And they're getting old, to be honest with you. And for the amount of money that you pay for this type of software, you hope that the fix is, you know, there's always going to be a glitch and there's always going to need to be a fix, but they've been going on again for a long time, so. That's why I stayed away from uh, E6 for the last couple weeks. I did play around a couple rounds recently, earlier in the week, or late last week, I should say. Uh, they went well. Um, different course than this, and I never really had any problems. I had a couple wild backspin, you know, the... 20, 25 foot backspin off the green, but if those happen every blue moon, I could live with that. But out of bounce in the middle of the green, to me, I'm not a software guy, but I think that should be a pretty, pretty easy fix. Especially when you know the hole and you know the location, it um, should be an easy fix. Outside to give me range there. Eighteen feet two inches. Yeah, that was never online. That was a it's a big putter push. I was still thinking about. I must have taken an eighth on that last hole, number twelve there when I did the pickup. So 292, carry on E6, e and we have a 278 carry on quad. That one's the other way, hey? And there on the app, I'm just swiping, um, swiping left on my iPad, and it's giving me the breakdown. I keep clearing the session because the range screen with all the shot tracers is getting busy. 
but if I wasn't clearing it, it would show me every shot so far that I hit with an iron. And if we wanted, I should be able to um, go in here if we were doing a practice and we were at the range. So I go in here and tag my actual club. And instead of calling it iron, if I was hitting a 9 iron, for example, I would just type in 9 iron. Or in my case, I usually put 9 i. And um, what that does, and I can change the identification color from red to whatever color we choose to, green. Um, what that does is it's going to capture your data on this particular screen, as well as in your FSX Live Web Portal. And it'll be capturing and tagging all your clubs, so all your 9 iron shots, it'll uh, categorize or group together. All your driver shots, it'll group together on the, the um, iOS app that we're using, the performance uh, fitting app. So uh, all these things are um, pretty good, pretty neat app again, free app. Uh, what do we got left? 100 yards. six software had the same number so I can't blame anything there that was that was me I just carried it too far way too far ah. <clears throat> that's a bummer putt to save that par. All in all, we're without that glitched hole on number 12, we're four under I think is where we should be. So this is a back right location, 220 should be for me. I'm going to try to hit a fade for this hole and if I hit a fade it's a four iron. If I went straight at the flag for that distance, I'd want to hit a 5-iron on with the connect, um, connect software here, so try to get this 4-iron here happening. Well, not sure we got it all. That was a little scrappy and a little um, caught the toe on the map. Big old slope there. I don't know where we're going now. Yeah, it wasn't much of a fade, was it? So that wild putt across the screen is not something that I'm interested in taking on. So I'm gonna try to chip it and get it close. chip right at the hole it did a veer to the right. Right at the hole. Well I think that's might be the first bogey. Definitely the first one I can think of right now. We're at minus three, not counting that glitch on number 12. 
out of bounds in the middle of the green 12 feet from the pin, that's crappy. quad 281 on E6 connect so it's the first one that I've seen that uh, close that accurate off a driver and um, again I don't know what determines uh, I see so the drive there was almost 3,000 rpm backspin so the higher the spin typically the accuracy of the carry distance gets closer more accurate in this case and that's exactly what happened there Seen all my uh, lower spin numbers, the more the numbers we would want for a driver spin, uh, much lower than the 3000. They were in the low 2000s, those were all big discrepancies. As soon as we hit a wild 3000 backspin driver, um, almost exactly the same, they are exactly the same. So, so spin has something to do with it. Uh, I know a few people um, have done some math and did some work on that, and that was the the conclusion. Well, that's a little too far with that pull. Kick right, come on. That was one of those throw your hands at it shots. <clears throat> Had a few of those today. Now we got this 29 foot downhill, left to right. Just get it close and get our par, and get the heck out of there. Jeez, we gotta be close to being done here. 17. Club head data after this shot. <clears throat> Felt like it was a little off the heel, that one. <clears throat> so E6 has it at 281 carry. Quad has it at 287 carry. That's pretty close. Was well, heel side. Well, not a bad strike. Just missed the center of the club face. Is all. So what's left? 225. I'm going to go with this flare and fade again, see if we can actually get some contact here. That one is fat too, it's not going to get there. Alright. It's a hell of a game, this golf. It's a really good day, some really bad days, and everything in the middle. Uh, so I needed 44 yards to the flag there. I carried it 40. E6 Connect says 32 yards, so there's a big discrepancy when you're only working with a small number. So my 40 carry that I thought I hit um, was ideal. Well, not quite ideal, but better than, than what I ended up with. Ah, man.
That is going to be a slippery putt too. Bogey number two for the bed here at the end of the hole. At the end of the round. Jeez. Uh, those ones just knock the wind out of your sail, don't they? Bogey a par five in this environment is just a bad hole. <laughs> a really bad hole. <laughs> two eight seven carry on E six two nine two on quad. <clears throat> left. Huh. Not very accurate for one twelve. Well, we pretty much had that one in the cup if we want to hit it harder. All in all, not terrible. Again, without the software glitch, hole number 12, we ended up with a 12 even though we picked up. Anyway, that's ugly. So, uh, yeah, there's the scorecard. That's the nature of the beast sometimes when you're playing um, on E6 Connect, all depending on the hole, depending on the course. Pretty random events, pretty random glitches, but um, you can end up with like what I have on hole 12 there. Um, you can hit some Velcro putts, you can hit some high back spinning 20, 30 feet off the green. Those type of shots happen. Hopefully the fix is near. And um, E6, please hurry. Thanks for watching.